Hey, today is Monday, it's the 27th of March. I didn't do any building yesterday on Sunday. I had plenty of other chores to keep me occupied. But on Saturday, I did accomplish what I set out to do, which was to finish the leading edges, rolling the leading edges of the uh, right elevator and the rudder. So all three of the control surfaces for the empennage um, are very nearly complete, except for the basically the fiberglass tips on those. Uh, bending those things was um, every bit as difficult as promised. Uh, definitely the left elevator was a lot of just kind of learning um, and stumbling upon a technique that seemed to get to the bend relatively quickly. Um, the right elevator went much easier than the left elevator once I kind of knew better what I was doing when I moved on to the rudder that was almost a different animal entirely together because it's a wider spar it's a bigger gap and there's not a lot of if any extra material where the two pieces overlap they do have pre-punched holes in them where they overlap um, but it is really a challenge to get those two pieces to mate up without any tension trying to pull them apart I think I did pretty good um, but the idea is that you want to be able to take these two flat pieces. These are sort of the extended parts of the skin, uh, beyond where they're, uh, riveted to the spar and then bring them together and rivet them together. So you have a nice round leaded ed leading edge because, um, when they made up with either the vertical stabilizer or the horizontal stabilizer, they need to be able to kind of fit in this space and move. Um, and when you do it, you don't want to just fold them over and uh, rivet them together because you'll create creases along the edge of the spar, which will create a weakness um, in that aluminum, which would be prone to cracking. So anyways, those are done. Um, tons of Gorilla Tape, a lot of different techniques tried, a lot of research on it. I um, think I did okay. Uh, today, um, and really for the next couple of weeks, uh, I will be going in and out of town as usual. But um, I'll go back to working on the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer first. Um, just uh, a reminder, the parts are still on back order for those, which are the um, attached brackets and bearings that would actually attach the control surfaces to those stabilizing surfaces. So because those are missing, I cannot completely close them up. I can't skin them until I have attached those pieces. But what I can do is get the skeletons mostly complete. Um, today, what I'm going to do is really just gather the materials for the horizontal stabilizer. It's been a long time since I've worked on it. I've got some uh, replacement parts that I reordered that have been here for weeks. So just kind of gather uh, everything together and get situated, clean up the shop a little bit. I don't have a lot of time because today I'm going to go see John Wick 4, which is really important to me because I spent most of 2021 working on that movie in uh, Berlin, Paris, and Jordan. In fact, if you look at this right here, this is my boss and I with Keanu right after we finished filming the final day in Jordan, obviously looking very proud of the work that we've done. So I'm excited to see it. I didn't go on Thursday night, Friday when it opened up because uh, I just like a lot of room to myself when I go see a movie. So anyways, uh, I'll keep you posted on, on how things go and uh, Stay tuned. Uh, the shop is clean and ready for new work, but I've only got about 30 minutes maybe until I need to uh, jump in the shower and then head out. So I'm just gonna check off a few items here on the plans um, for the work <laughs> that I did over the weekend and then start pulling the parts out for the horizontal stabilizer and have everything staged for probably tomorrow. This work was done on, on March 27th, I think, uh, which means it's a solid three months since the last time I've done anything with the horizontal stabilizer um, between working on other parts and then traveling back and forth to Pittsburgh for work. Um, I just continued to work on those other parts and let the replacement parts for this pile up. And so it's going to take me a little bit to sort of refamiliarize myself with um, where I left off and, and what parts, uh, <laughs> that I even received. Um, in a few minutes, you'll see me actually pulling out a van's, uh, shipping receipt just to remind myself what 
parts in particular I had replaced and then going back and forth to the shelves there. I did mark all of the um, the bad parts as bad, but at some point I think they kind of got shuffled back into the mix as I was moving things around. But from the horizontal stabilizer alone, I've got a pretty good scrap pile. In fact, I, I if I could get a set of plans from Hanna-Barbera, maybe I could build one of these things uh, later. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm actually glad that I took this time where I didn't do any building or attempt any building on this day, but just to get situated and settled and ready to do good work on the following day with a clear understanding of where I left off. But um, I think in a minute we're going to get into a discussion of these aluminum splice angles for the forward spar, the horizontal stabilizer that have been uh, the root of most of my problems with that. And um, yeah, when we get into that, I'll I'll end the, the boring voiceover hmm. and uh, let you get a better understanding of how we got here and what the problem is or was. Um, I'm recording this on May 3rd, so it's been a few weeks and it's all done. So everything is staged for uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm sure that in an earlier uh, video, I kind of explained what happened, but just in case I'll explain again. Um, I've got a minute. On the RV8 um, and the RV7 and others, I suppose, the um, horizontal stabilizer is angled, which means that the front spar uh, gets spliced together and it has a bend here. Uh, I'll have to look at it, but it's like a I believe it's a six, six degree bend. And you have two, um, at the top and the bottom of the spar, you have two heavy pieces of aluminum angle that help tie that all together and give it strength. Um, one of the very first mistakes that I made uh, was that with this one, yeah, uh, this piece starts out unbent and squared off similar to starts out like this um, and then you need to uh, make these trims along the side to get this shape although not this exact shape that was the problem is that there's not nearly enough edge distance here I measured the radius of this uh, incorrectly and then you mark a bend line make the bend uh, all of that. This one that I have in my hand goes on the top of the spar. There's another one that goes on the bottom of the spar, which I haven't messed up, not even once, but I messed this one up three times. Um, man, I, first I cut it incorrectly, um, then I bent it incorrectly, and then finally, and this is the big one that caused me to have to reorder the spar is that um, when I was all excited and going to get it all put together, um, you can see that these two pieces uh, differ um, in the, the shape of the, the flange at the corners. When I was working on this and like, I got it all right. I got the, uh, the front spar, which I had to do twice um, because of cutting the relief holes uh, correctly, leaving enough edge distance and then making the bend and the tabs and everything like that. Got it all done um, and getting ready to put it all together and match drilling holes between these pieces of angle, the reinforcement doublers and the spar. Um, orientation is a big deal and with a piece like this um, I know that my video got cut off before but basically short version is I had the orientation mixed up on my head and I ended up placing one of these two um, support angles in the improper position and then later um, not noticing that it was in the wrong position. I noticed some holes that weren't match drilled and so I match drilled them rather than thinking why doesn't this look right? So 
and that ended up messing up the angle, the doubler, and the spar by adding new holes where they didn't, uh, where they didn't belong. And that's where we'll end this weird installment, a sloppy edit uh, spread over two days and an awkward explanation. So thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.